Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about the books I read in April. Continuing the trend of not reading as many books as I would have wanted, I only read two books in April but that's okay. So I'm hoping to read a lot more in May. Let's just get to the first book I read. This first book is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. And as I mentioned in other videos before that I have read only two other Taylor Jenkins Reid books and I really enjoyed them. They were The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the Six. With Malibu Rising, it was a different flavor from those previous two that I've read from her. But I think with Taylor Jenkins Reid, she's the type of author to bring something fresh with every book she publishes, which I really enjoy. And with Malibu Rising, there's a lot more focus on family drama and a lot of family um, theme going on. So Malibu Rising is set in 1983 and it takes place over the course of one night at the famous Riva mansion. The Rivas are a famous family who have risen up to fame and coming from a background of struggles as they were growing up. At this end of summer party, you have to be part of the exclusive crowd to even know about this party. And with any family, the Rivas have their own fair share of problems. And by the end of the night, the mansion is up in flames. So the first thing that I absolutely loved about this book was the Malibu setting. We get a lot of the surf, sand, and sun backdrop of the setting. And it was really nice to read about that. And quite timely now that it's spring, almost summer now. And... I'm really excited about just the warmer weather in general. And in this book, we get two different timelines. So we're following the four siblings of the Riva family in present day, which would be 1983 for them. We also follow their parents back in the 1950s. In the 1983 timeline, I really did like how the chapters were formatted in that they follow each hour of the day and we find out what the siblings are up to for each hour of that one day. Who are the four Riva siblings that we learn about and who each play their own role in the family. First up, we have Nina, who is the people pleaser and the mother figure of the family, and she's also a supermodel and talented surfer. Secondly, we have Jay, who is a confident surfer and has a secret that he's holding back from his family. Thirdly, we have Hud, who is hidden in his brother's shadow, but he's also a really renowned photographer and he does work really closely with Jay. Fourth, we have Kit, who is the baby of the family and she's constantly the underestimated one. So the sibling dynamics were really tense to read about, but at the end of the day, each of the siblings, they love and they understand or grow to understand each other. It was really nice to read about their own personal struggles and how that fits into a family dynamic. And we do have a nice detail of reading back of the siblings and how they got famous. So it was really nice to read how they arisen to that fame that they hold. Although with the four siblings, their complex dynamics do stem from their childhood and from their parents. The only thing that was kind of and anything about for me in this book was the many multiple perspectives in this book. There were mm, some uh, perspectives that seemed completely random. It was just like showing a random stranger's perspective at some point in the book. Um, overall, we did have our main driving force of the book, which was Nina, in my opinion. Nina also does play a pivotal role in the flashback scenes. So with her parents growing up and we see how the siblings grew up with each other. And the last thing that was a little bit okay for me was the ending was a bit abrupt after building all that tension over that one night. Although it was abrupt but it kind of made sense of how everything wrapped up nicely and it was a good ending. I did appreciate learning more about surfing in general because I don't really know much about surfing. Overall it was a really excellent storytelling of party that didn't go as intended, but ends up with stronger bonds with people who you are closest to and who matter in your life. So I cannot wait to read more from Taylor Jenkins Reid. So my second and last read of April was Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. This is the first in a duology and I did rate this one 4 out of 5 stars. So this book did take me a long time to get through, but it was not at fault of the book. It was just I was in a really bad reading slump in the middle or the beginning of April after Malibu Rising. And I just wasn't 
in the mood in general to read but once i picked up a spin the dawn again after like a week or so it just flew by for me so let's get to what this one's about so this one is described as project runway meets mulan so we're following maya and she dreams of becoming the best tailor in the land but unfortunately she's a girl and in atlanti only boys can be competing for the role of the imperial tailor when a royal summons her father who is also a tailor but he has failing health Maya takes it upon herself to disguise herself as a boy and and take her father's place in this competition to be the Imperial Tailor. Right off the bat, the Mulan and Project Runway vibes, we see them immediately in the tones of the first part of the book. It doesn't follow the story Mulan strictly except for the disguising yourself as a boy part and the author does make the book into her own which is really nice about this retelling. Maya does come from a tragic past and she really wants to help her family through hardships and she is in that position to do so and she also can get a chance to hone her talent and show off her talent of making beautiful clothes that she has learned from growing up in a tailor shop. I would consider Maya as a driving force of this book and you do learn to care for her throughout her journey. What I would describe her as is um, being really resourceful, she's strong-willed, and she has a really good sense of like innocent wonder sometimes in some parts of the book. During the competition for the Imperial Tailor, that first part of the book was very much like Project Runway. We get like the host um, being Lady Sarnai, who is the person that all the tailors are making clothes for. She was giving the competitors different unexpected challenges and it was fun to read about all the different clothes that they have to make. I remember at one point they had to try to make glass slippers so it was like weird challenges which is really a testament to Project Runway. Although there is a twist of backstabbing a lot towards Maya herself and this doesn't happen on Project Runway but in Spin the Dawn there is a risk of death in this competition. During this time in the palace we also get to meet our love interest Eden. So Eden is an enchanter which is in a position who works really closely with the emperor and he has huge amounts of magic which is a rarity in this kingdom. Eden is a character who grows on you as a reader and the same thing happens for Maya. Eden himself is observant, he's arrogant but he's also helpful and he also has some mysterious secrets. Maya's and Eden's relationship and romance is something that takes center stage in this book and I did really like them together but I did want to see more of independent growth of Maya on her own and we do get those moments but I just felt there was a huge emphasis on the relationship between Eden and Maya. However, Eden isn't overbearing towards Maya and he helps her understand like the political workings of Alandi and he also helps her understand the magic in this world. And the best thing about this book was the writing. I really loved the writing itself. It was really fluid and you were immersed into the world of Alandi. And Atlanti itself has really strong influences from Chinese culture. Overall, the story does lead you onto a magical adventure with Maya and Eden throughout the kingdom and you learn about the culture, the magic, and the political problems of this place. Maya herself is also a really great character to read about and I really cannot wait to continue her journey and read more about how this story ends. So those were the two books I read. I did really enjoy them, but I think I didn't really explicitly love them. Like, oh my god, I didn't freak out over both of these books, but they were pretty decent reads for me. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you all had a good one. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see you all soon.